Hey everybody, Mike D here. Welcome to the program. This season we're on the road. We've rented an RV and packed it up with a Daryl, with a Shannon, and with me, Mike D. And we're traveling across North America in search of regular folks like you who have a passion for fishing. Our first stop, Lake Onondaga, New York, where Mike El Presidente Cusano tells us the bass are biting. Let's go to Lunkerville. Going! Fish on! It seems in every town in America that there's a secret fishing spot where the water runs clear and the bass are always biting. And at that spot, there's an unsung hero who knows every stump, lay down and lily pad. Seems all he's got to do is wet a line. <laughs> and sure enough, he's reeling in a big bass. So if you're looking for real people with real fish stories, then hop a ride. We're going to Lunkerville. to be the president of a New York Bass Chapter Federation? Correct, absolutely. And even though you're not president anymore, we yes. still call you El Presidente because that's just the way it works. <laughs> you know, you don't call Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton. Nice. You call him President Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so regal. That's you nice. are regal, man. <laughs> nice. I feel like we're going on a parade or something, being back here. Like, do you have some candy I can throw <laughs> out to people? You, you kind of are going on a parade. We have lights on the lake from Onondaga Lake they put this on, it's three and a half miles of Christmas lights. Really? People will drive through with their cars, they'll have the lights, they got music playing on the radio that you can tune into. Yeah, it's a big deal. That is so cool. Ooh, it's an overcast day, Mike. In October, it's kind of warm. It's unseasonably warm. We're about 10 degrees warmer than we should be. I'd like it a little bit cooler so the fish would be more traditional areas, but we'll be all right. We're gonna, we're gonna search for them, use some Chatter baits, spinner baits, top water to cover some water, and then when we find them, we'll slow down. Okay, we gotta find them first. Yes, find let's them. find them. All right. Wait, hold on. this is it. This is it. We are here. What? What are we on? We're on a hump or something? You're or? on a shell. Yeah, what you have is you have some deep water over here. So right now in the fall, everything seems to be bait fish oriented. Mm -hmm. And right now, water temp. oh my God, water temperatures, oh, 66.6 .6 degrees. In not October. A, in October. In upstate New York. In upstate wow, New York. Wow, that's those, not good. Those should be right now 52 to 55 wow. degrees. Right now, these fish have not set up in any pattern. Mm -hmm. They're not in a fall pattern. They're not, you know, anywhere near where they should be. But I think we should be able to get some on top water. They should be a little bit more active right now. We got perfect overcast conditions. So if we are going to catch them on top, today will be the day. And wait, does that say four feet? Four feet. Yeah, I know. It's You're, only four feet. We're, look at how far, far we are from shore. Yes, yes. All right, so we're going to give you a little walking bait here. So everything right now is, is going to be shad related, um, bait fish related, so that's kind of what I focus on. So we're going to throw bait fish looking baits, whites. I throw white almost as a, as a staple. So that right there is pretty bait fish looking. All right, yeah, just walk it. Just real slow too. Don't don't get crazy with it. Slow. I, yep. Slower the better. Yep. And I'm going to throw I'm going to throw a bigger bigger bait so we're not both throwing the same thing. Nice. Is that Bill Dance? Bill Dance. It's an ex. I don't even know that they make those anymore. Well, Bill's our buddy, so. Uh, Bill's Bill's an icon. That is for sure. If we catch a fish on it, I'm going to send him a, a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Lunkerville is presented by South Bend, a fishing tradition since 1906. Also sponsored by Zip Fire Starters. Give your fire some zip. Cruise America. RV rental and sales. See what's out there. And deeper, the number one portable fish finder. I bought the fresh stick, just as you told me. You're absolutely right. It's neat and quick, and it goes on dry. It did make me feel cool and sweet, just as you said. I did everything you said, but my boss still hasn't asked me to lunch. 
Unlike some deodorants, Fresh doesn't guarantee you'll get ahead in business. All Fresh does is keep you fresh. When you think of it, that's quite a lot. What are we looking at here, Mike? There's going to be remnants of scattered weeds. There's going to be milfoil, and then there's a, another weed called sago pondweed, which is kind of stringy. Not my favorite weed, okay? But the fish will use it, and it, more importantly, the bait fish tend to use it. So that's kind of what we're you're fishing around is this. So throw on this side of the boat over here. And are we looking for smallies or largies? You're, you, you'll run into both. Okay. You will run into both. It's a equal opportunity employer. So we've walked the dog before. <laughs> on Lunkerville, but let's talk about your technique. How do you do it? What, do you pause it? Is it fast? Is it slow? Show me what you do. So basically I'll make a long cast, I'll let the bait settle, and then to walk the dog is all rod tip. It's not the reel. People overpower it with the reel. You're using the rod tip with slack in the line to make it walk back and forth side to side. You'll see I'm not even really reeling all that much. Mm -hmm. It's mostly there's a reel. So it's yank, yank, reel. Yank, yank, reel. Okay? And you want to vary your cadence until you figure out how the fish want it. Oh, there's one right behind it. Right behind it, Mike. You see one? Yep. Yeah, he just came up on it. Oh, there he goes. Got there him. you got one. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Perfect. That guy wants to be on TV. Did you see him? Did you see him squat it? Yeah. Nice, awesome. Look at that. He came up and looked at it. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. I love that you saw it, you know? Yeah, wait, and yeah. then he was kind of following it, and then you paused it, right? Yep, he came back and got it. Did I, he hit it right when you started it again? Right, uh, I think another twitch, but I gotta grab One some pliers twitch. here, because I don't want to wear these hooks. You need pliers? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Because right. yeah, these treble hooks, I don't like to mess around with. I think you were on a show with me, Mike, and you had a hook in your hand. Did I? Yeah, pickerel. Oh, but I got it out. It, it wasn't well, like surgical. No, but it's you stuck it, sucks. it yeah. and then the pickerel took it out for you. What, what, Mike, how, you're involved in this lake somehow. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm the chairman of the Onondaga County Fisheries Advisory Board. I've been doing that for about eight years now. So we, we do a lot of issues that are important to the lake. We talk about fishing access and ways that we can help improve the fisheries for, the, for all the anglers. It's, it's, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, you're chairman of the board and El Presidente. Yes. Man. Yes. Yes. He's a very important person. <laughs> very important. So if you notice, Mike, out here is 14 feet of water. Then we're going to come right up to this little shelf of about anywhere to four to five feet of water. The fish are still here. Obviously, they didn't go anywhere. You seeing them on the graph? Uh, no. You're, when you're in shallow water like this, you, you don't really see. Don't. People get confused. Okay. From a graph perspective, they say, oh, you got a fish finder. It's cheating. Well, not really, because when you're only in four feet of water, it shoots in a cone down. Well, that cone in four feet of water is only about that big. So the fish would literally have to be in that cone for it to show up. Fascinating. So ten, yeah, every 10 feet of water, you get a three foot diameter cone. So, every, so 30 feet, you now are seeing nine foot of the bottom. Therefore, that's why the deeper you are, the more you'll see fish out, you know, show up better on your graph. It will show me where I have little dips and rises, because when you're up shallow like this, we've been fluctuating. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but we've gone from five foot, four foot, there's little little mm -hmm. small indentations, and on those indentations, there's also weeds that'll set up. So those fish are kind of using those like little road, road maps. Another, oh, there he is, right there. Baby, come on up. Oh yeah, come on up, baby. Oh, digging. Beauty, oh, oh, that's a nice one. That is a nice one. Nice that's a very nice fish. fish. That's a beautiful fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice, healthy one. I told you we were gonna catch largemouth today. I lied. <laughs> you said both. I said, said both. both. I did.
Univac, the giant electronic brain made only by Remington Rand, takes business statistics from magnetic tape, letters, numbers, and punctuation marks, processing them through its electronic circuits at phenomenal speeds. Univac can compute payrolls electronically, then produce printed checks in a flash, over 8,000 checks an hour with this high-speed printer. Univac leads the field of electronic computing. If you can get people out that have never gone fishing before and you can get them on a topwater bite, they're going to be hooked for the rest of their exactly. lives. Exactly. You know? And that's how I got hooked. Um, I hadn't fished since I was a kid and I went fishing and caught a smallmouth bass on a topwater popper in the middle of the day. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is it an artificial lure, but on topwater, seeing him explode, I was hooked. Oh, there he is, oh, right there. That's the same guy. No, it might be a largey. It's a large one. Ooh. I think it's a large one. Yeah, a little large one. Perfect TV fish. Come here, buddy. Beautiful. <laughs> Working for the camera. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you found a little honey hole over well, there. Well, this whole area is a honey hole. I mean, this is this is the thing. When you get into the fall, they got to eat, okay? Now, granted, these fish don't even know it's fall yet because you got 66-degree uh. water temperature. But, you know, that's good oh, for Oh, yeah. Them. I'm fishing it pretty slow. I'm not I'm not working real. Get really and, slow. I'm, I'm just, trying just to mimic kind, what just, you're doing. Yeah, see, I mean, I'm not cranking it along. They're just kind of just coming up behind it so this whole little area is a big flat and then like I said you got this this drop off through here so these fish are gonna roam up and down here depending on where the mm -hmm. bait goes so there's little schools of bait that'll just kind of mill around and hopefully if the Sun peaks out a little bit you'll be able to see some of those little schools mm -hmm. of bait come through why is this such a popular design for topwater lures well, how this works, Mike, is, is really, it's the style of the bait. It's kind of like a cigar. And most of the walking style baits, they all have that similar type shape, mm -hmm. okay? This one has a little bit, this, this bait's gonna float a little higher in the water column, whereas some of the other brand baits will actually float tail down, okay? This one's gonna float up a little higher. And you can hear that, that nice little rattle in there. I think what's different is some of them have more BBs. This one has a, a little bit larger rattle that makes kind of that little back and forth knocking sound. I'm gonna just throw right over here and catch one. I'm throwing over too. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, this is, this is it, Mike. You ready? Come okay. on. There's one right there. Oh yeah. That's a good one. This is a good one right here, Mike. He didn't splash on it, he just sucked it in. Mm -hmm. I thought I saw something following it. That's a nice fish. Put it in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. That one will work. Is that a largemouth? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. God, I love that they're both up here. Yeah, you got, look at how he got that. Ooh, that's a nice he got, one. Yeah, he got that big one. That's a beautiful one. Mmm, man. Hey, when they get both hooks like that. <laughs> He's hungry. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good sign. Thank you. Nice. Now the trick is to not wear those hooks. Look at that. That's a good fish. That is a beautiful fish. How big is that? Uh, three and a quarter probably. Mm -hmm. Me, uh, geez, what was that? Well, I, dude, I don't know. I. <laughs> we just saw one, two, three fish come up. You know, you are allowed to, to catch. One. I know. Come on, man. I don't want to lose a topwater bite. Snowflake, it's not fair. You should always be out fishing me. <laughs> Something would be very wrong if I was out fishing you. you. Actually, I think the first time I took you out, though. I was near, I, I had you, a nice run. You had a nice little run there. And I caught that bowfin. Bowfin, yeah. yes. Yeah. That, it was a Sanko bite, so you were in your glory. <laughs> You're like, yeah. That was my groove, man. <laughs> There's one right there. Got another one. Little guy? Littler, yeah. But you know what? He's fun sized. <laughs> Another large one. Look at him. Mm. 
Mike, you can start catching fish anytime you want. You know what? Let me get one of those lures. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sorry to build no. dance. So <laughs> I mean, I know it's not just the lure. No, we love Bill. It's Come not on. Fault. That's not My right. Fault. I take full responsibility. Speaking of Bill Dance, we caught up with him recently where he shared the story of his first fish. What really kick-started my career was a fishing trip when I caught my very first bass. And I remember I had 75 cents in my pocket. And I went down to the hardware store that sold sporting goods and I bought my first fishing lure. It was an Arbogast jitterbug. Oh yeah. And that plug is still made today. And I walked down on a point about 50 yards through some bushes. And I was standing on the point and I, I looked out and I couldn't believe what I saw. I saw two bass swimming along together. Mm -hmm. One about a pound and a half and one about two pounds. And I thought, good night, water was crystal clear. And I got so excited, my heart was pounding. And I took the rod and I started making several false casts with it. And I made a pretty accurate cast. And I missed the target by about 20 feet. But I, I went, I turned the handle and started moving the bait. And the, blah, 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 blah. you remember the yeah, sound blah, blah, of a, a jitterbug, you know, that, blah, 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 blah. And both fish turned. Well, I knew they heard the sound yeah. of that bait. It reinforced what Granddaddy had talked about. Fish can hear sound. And, and they were at least 20 feet away. They started moving in the direction of the bait. And I stopped the bait. Well, they stopped. And I started moving the bait again. Well, they moved within about six feet of the bait. I stopped the bait. They started, they stopped. I started the bait. Well, this two pounder made a, a dash to the bait. As I, just about the time it got to the bait, I stopped it. He stopped. And I mean, it was the most impressive thing I'd ever seen in my life. I was about seven years old. And to witness this, it was just, it was an experience. I mean, the biggest experience I'd ever seen. And I engaged, started reeling again and the fish just made a hard turn and just exploded on the bait. Just a shower of water just yeah. came blowing out of the water. And I mean, my eyes wide open, my yeah. heart pounding. I mean, I couldn't even hear the gurgle of the bait because my heart was pounding so much. And I just reared back and set the hook. And I started reeling. And I, I reeled about 10 turns and I couldn't stand it. I just took the rod, threw it over my head and reached up and grabbed the line. <laughs> and I, I mean, I just started well roping the fish. I mean, I just couldn't believe what I had seen. Have you ever wondered why everyone on the show looks just like you? And your friends? And your kids? Because they are. For over 14 years, Lunkerville has been the TV program that features real people with real fish stories. And you can be on the show too. All you need is a passion for fishing. We'll come to your town, fish on your honey hole, and you'll be the star of your own episode of the show. So join our Facebook page, interact with other folks over there, and we just may be featuring you next. Don't you go anywhere. Lunkerville will be right back. Additional support for Lunkerville provided by Fishing Paradise 3D. Download for free at the App Store, Google Play, and Facebook. The Zip Instant Light Barbecue Tray. The impromptu no-fuss barbecue solution. So Mike, what you want to do is, out here you want to keep your eye open on this area, because last week I had three tiger muskies swimming with their head out of the water Ooh. like a snake. And oh, I threw man. in front of one of them, and it was a 37-inch tiger muskie. You caught it. Caught it. You got a picture? Yeah. Got Let's a picture. I got, video. I got a small video of it, too. I want to see it. All right, all right. We'll, show, we'll get it to you. overcast we're expecting rain I think in like three hours is that a good time to fish like before fronts coming in this time of year it can be a fantastic time to, to catch fish get some fired up the, the barometric pressure there we're right now on a low pressure and I think if you look around it's nice stable this is a stable low pressure you don't have the high winds you don't have I mean so we're not dealing with the high winds right now once it picks up a little bit it might be a little bit more challenging but right now, this is the time we should be catching fish. Okay. I'm real, real comfortable with this time. You can't say we should be catching fish because you're catching fish. <laughs> but we are not. 
Is there a special wax? I mean, I'm serious. I'm not like. Joking. No, no. I, I there might be. I, do you have to do it? Shave it every day? If you want it to look clean, you got to yeah. shave it every day. I literally did it. I was dog sitting. My wife shot a video to send to the people of the dog. I said, let me see the video. And I look and I go, you're letting me walk around like this? <laughs> Hold on a second here. Time's up already? Uh, yeah, this isn't gonna work out here. Um, uh, our 30 minutes is up, I get that, but it's early. I haven't caught a fish. I have a lot more questions to ask Mike. So we're just gonna have to fish some more and we're gonna just make another episode with Mike. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Don't forget to tune in next week to Lunkerville. Or if you're watching it on demand, just let it roll into part two of El Presidente.